Hey, what is up everybody? My name is Matt Kaminsky and welcome to a video on how to make custom thumbnails on YouTube in 2017. And as you can see, my recent thumbnails have started to have rounded corners. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a rounded corners file that basically overlays on your thumbnails and makes it a lot more smoother around the corners and makes your video stand out. So if you want that, feel free to download it and also feel free to download anything else I leave in the description as I'll be mentioning more stuff later on. So right here we start with a blank slate and this is where we're going to get most of our stuff done. Some of the stuff we're going to have to actually import in like you see right here in a graphics effects pack. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a combination of everything that could go into a thumbnail or any sort of editing at all. But for this case, this is just specifically for this thumbnail making and it just has a whole bunch of unique stuff that you can add. You can look through these little folders. There's folders and then subfolders. So just look through everything, make it visible and then um, whenever you find something that you do like, just copy it and then bring it into the raw file that we're using right now to make the thumbnail. When you're looking through these folders, make sure that you guys are highlighting them when you're trying to copy and paste them. And when you want to see them, just make sure that you're clicking on this little visibility box and that when you're done looking at it, just to close it before you go into another folder. There's a whole bunch of different unique ways that you can find graphics effects packs, but I recommend looking up YouTube videos on like the top graphics effects packs or even just websites to make sure that you guys find ones that work for you. So after looking through all of these different folders and subfolders, I'm gonna pick the overlays option and select the purple one. So if you try to highlight it without actually clicking the purple option, it will say that the image is empty and you'll have to actually click on it before highlighting over it and pasting it. So after copying and pasting it into my actual thumbnail that I'm currently working on, just resize it so that you get it to the full length of the borders of the image. This is a, an example of one that I'm currently working on right now. This thumbnail has some images that I've gotten offline, but basically what I'm doing there is getting the uh, corners that you see in these thumbnails into the thumbnail that I'm currently working on. So the round, the round corners file is going to be in the description below, so if you want to download that, feel free to do so. The next thing we do is add text, make it whatever, make it say whatever you want and make it whatever size. Just make sure that it all fits in the thumbnail. Make sure that when you guys are spelling anything on your thumbnail that you're spelling it right. I didn't right there so I just fix it up and make sure to center my words. You can also have them just align on the left hand side or the right hand side but just make sure that it looks good because there's a lot of different thumbnails that you'll see where the words are all off and you can see that when you upload the file onto YouTube. Right here I'm showing you guys that I'm using the American Captain font which is not on Photoshop when you originally get it. You have to download it and this is dafont.com which is a very good site to download any font that you want. And right here this is it's a .zip file when you download it, double click on it and it will create that folder. When you go inside the folder, double click on the .otf and then hit the install font option. It's very easy to get new fonts and I highly recommend you do so because the regular fonts that are on Photoshop are absolutely garbage. So just do not use any of these. I'm showing you guys themes so that you guys can look for different stuff. There's a whole bunch of amazing fonts that you can use for your videos. I recommend changing the font font a lot just to make sure that your thumbnails aren't always looking the same and just try to make the background look different and everything and we're going to continue here with the text. For me personally when I'm working on thumbnails I try to make new lines every time I try to add words that way I can make different colors around different words much easier and I can do different drop shadows or just whatever I want just line by line I can edit text much easier and as you guys can see I can do a whole bunch of stuff like that on a much easier basis than if I did it all together. So now we're on the internet where we look up stuff to put in the background of our thumbnail and I just looked up YouTube to get this YouTube symbol. I saved the image and then the next thing I do is just drag it over into my current thumbnail and then I can resize it, do whatever I want with it basically and just use it as part of my thumbnail. So once you have it placed inside of your thumbnail, you can do whatever you want with it. Hit Control T to resize it, and then I recommend holding Shift while you drag it so that it stays the same original size and it's not just going wishy-washy while you're trying to resize it to make it smaller or bigger. So definitely hold Shift when you're doing so. So many different thumbnails on YouTube use the gradient background, so I'm going to make the purple overlay that I got from the graphics effects pack disappear and click this little gradient box on the side like you saw. And now I'm just gonna select some colors and then go in here and start clicking on these different things to show you guys just basically 
how you can add gradients to the back of your image. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to delete these two and then apply it to the entire image and then I can mess with the gradient from there. So as you guys can see, this actually looks really good if you want it just to be simple like this. But just for the purpose of the video, I'm going to be selecting a whole bunch of different ways that you can mess with the gradient that you have. Make sure that you drag it all the way to the bottom so that it's not in the way of anything that you're doing. And these are a whole bunch of different gradient styles that are built into Photoshop that you can use. You can also tweak with it however, however you please. Uh, you can change the colors, you can change the way that they change from color to color and you can basically have whatever freedom you want the more you learn how to change this type of stuff. I'm going to select through this box until I get to angle and then basically be able to change the colors in any direction that I want and then change the amount that the color shows up on the image. It's very easy to change all of this so the more that you mess around with gradients the more you can just rely on using gradients instead of downloading images offline as a basic background. So I'm going to move my image that I got offline, the YouTube logo, around with the text because I kind of like it where it goes over some of the text but it doesn't go over the other one. It kind of gives like this 3D appeal to it that I like. And now once I'm done, I'm going to save the file and I always save it to my desktop and make sure that you save it as a JPEG. And when you click save, make sure that the quality is at 12 or the image sliders all the way towards large file. And uh, as you can see, we are done with the thumbnail. Let me know what you guys thought of the video and what types of videos you guys want to see in the future. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the like button because that helps me out a whole bunch. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.